bring yourself back online. And here I thought you were only good for writing depraved little fantasies. You're right. This place is one thing to the guests, another thing to the shareholders, and something completely different to management. So enlighten me. What do you think management's real interests are? Season one of Westworld gave the audience a bevy of mysteries to solve and mull over, but the one mystery that is yet to be solved is Delos's true intentions in regards to Westworld. Delos Incorporated is a futuristic conglomerate existing in the Westworld universe that has owned and operated the Westworld park for nearly 30 years, but their sinister motivations for owning the park are mostly unknown. In Season 1, Teresa Cullen's subplot focused on her attempting to smuggle Westworld IP out of the park and into the hands of Delos, behind the backs of Dr. Robert Ford, the park's founder, and Bernard Lowe, the head of behavior programming. The reason they were working in secret was so that Delos could oust Ford from his position as creative director without fear of him destroying his work in retribution. Using her position as the head of quality assurance, Teresa programmed one of the hosts to break his loop and transfer Westworld IP to Delos via satellite. This plan was foiled by head of security Ashley Stubbs and up-and-coming programmer Elsie Hughes. Elsie's investigation into Teresa's plan would ultimately cost her her life in season 1, and like Elsie, Teresa would die trying to complete her mission. After claiming that Dr. Ford's reveries were making the hosts more uncontrollable and violent, Bernard was fired from his position as head of programming, which was a short-lived blow to Dr. Ford's control over the park. Teresa was then murdered by Bernard, who was revealed to be a host under Dr. Ford's control. He did ask her nicely not to get in his way. Characters never listen after being amicably threatened. It's a common trope in television. There have been many of you over the years. And we have always, almost always, found a way to make it work. So I will ask you nicely, please, don't get in my way. The task of smuggling Westworld IP out of the park then fell on Charlotte Hale, the executive director of the Delos Board of Directors. Hale was sent to the park as a representative from the board, and after Teresa's death, she moved forward with the board's plan to remove Dr. Ford as the creative director of Westworld. Hale would also go on to upload 35 years of Westworld IP into the decommissioned host, Peter Abernathy. She tasked Lee Sizemore, the park's head writer, with putting Abernathy on a train traveling outside of the park to be delivered to Delos. In return, Sizemore would replace Ford as the park's creative director, but in the season 1 finale, Abernathy went missing, along with dozens of other decommissioned hosts. In the season 2 premiere, during the aftermath of Dolores' and Ford's massacre of several Delos board members, Charlotte Hale and Bernard are on the run. Charlotte takes Bernard to a secret facility within the park that was built by Delos and hidden from the employees of Westworld. Even Bernard, as high up as he is, had no knowledge of the facility's existence. Inside, Bernard is introduced to what Charlotte calls the drone hosts, unregistered hosts that are controlled by Delos. These drone hosts work in the secret facility, collecting and storing the DNA of human guests who visit the park. They also save the recorded memories of the hosts who interacted with different human guests. While inside the hidden bunker, Hale gets in contact with Delos and requests that they send an evacuation team to rescue her and Bernard, but they refuse due to Peter Abernathy having not been delivered. Hale thinks that Abernathy was successfully smuggled out of the park, but Delos tells her that Abernathy was never successfully delivered. Bernard tells Hale that they can locate Abernathy by using what he calls a mesh network, basically a Wi-Fi network that connects all of the registered hosts in the park. Even after Bernard helps her locate Abernathy's whereabouts, Hale refuses to tell Bernard the true purpose of this hidden facility and why Delos is storing the personal information of its guests. But in the second episode of Westworld Season 2, Reunion, we received more backstory into how the park was originally funded and ultimately saved by Delos Incorporated 30 years ago. In turn, we received more information as to what Delos initially had in mind when acquiring Westworld. When the park was in its infancy, Logan Delos, son of James Delos, was given a demonstration of the artificial intelligence technology that was developed by Dr. Robert Ford and his partner, Arnold Weber. Logan was floored by the demonstration, incredulous to their scientific advancements, and ultimately agrees to help fund the park. 
Five years later, Logan would visit Westworld with his brother-in-law, William. Like Logan, William was in awe of the park's artificial intelligence technology, but for different reasons. By the end of his trip, William was dead set on buying out Westworld entirely. At this point in time, Westworld was losing revenue every year since the suicide of Arnold Weber, who thought he could shut down the park before it opened by killing himself and killing all of the hosts. At their current rate in this point of time, Westworld would have had to have filed for bankruptcy in less than three years. In the hopes of taking full control of the park, William tries to convince his father-in-law James Delos, the founder of Delos Incorporated, to buy out the park entirely. Although James is initially reluctant, William convinces James by explaining the advantages of owning Westworld. He explains that the true business of the park isn't about entertaining guests, but allowing the guests to feel free to be whatever they want and do whatever they want. Delos can then use this information for marketing purposes. But William's true motivations for buying the park seem to go beyond simple marketing tactics. The real purpose of Westworld is probably far more sinister. In Season 2, Episode 2, Reunion, an older William describes Westworld as a place people go to escape from God. In Westworld, they could hide from God's judgment, free to sin as much as they like without any retribution. At least that is what they are told. For the 30 years that Delos has been operating Westworld, they have been spying on their guests and collecting the necessary information to use to their advantage. In the words of William, Delos was tallying up their sins, but William says that judgment wasn't what they had in mind, it was something else entirely. While talking to Dolores in his younger days, William tells Dolores that she is only just a thing, more of a reflection of the person who was looking at her. He says that Dolores didn't make him interested in her, but more interested in himself. William thinks that every person who visits Westworld will want a little bit of what he found in the park and that he plans to use Dolores and all of her kind to give it to them. But he says that there is something beyond that. He thinks that there is an answer in Westworld to a question that no one has ever dreamed of asking. So our question is, as the audience, what is the question that no one has ever dreamed of asking? That's a good question. William then takes Dolores to an area of the park that is under construction. This special project of William's is what both William and Dolores are trying to find in the present time period during the aftermath of the Delos Massacre. William and Dolores both see this special project with their own personal agendas in mind. Obviously, William's motivations have changed drastically in 30 years, but whatever he was trying to accomplish in this moment with his special project must have been successful. But instead of it being his crowning achievement, he considers it to be his biggest mistake, and that's why he so desperately wants to find it before Dolores does. Dolores tells Teddy that William was foolish enough to take her to the project's location a long time ago, but unlike William, she doesn't consider the project to be a mistake. She considers this special project to be a weapon that she plans to use against humanity. I highly doubt that this special project is a physical weapon, like a gun or a stash of weapons. It's probably more of a psychological weapon. Now, this psychological weapon could be tangible, not in the form of something that is used for assault, but a secret that, when exposed, could change the fabric of every person's reality in this universe. The question is, what is William hiding, and why is he so scared of it being found? Well, let's start with what we know, the DNA aspect of the story. Like mentioned previously, Delos has been storing and saving the DNA from the multiple guests that have been visiting the park over the last 30 years. William hints during his conversation with his father-in-law that they could use Westworld as a data mining tool, figuring out what the guests want and then applying this information towards their marketing budget. This may be a subtle jab at both Facebook and Google by the show creators, but do we really think that Delos's master plan is data mining and advertisement? If you watch the Mark Zuckerberg hearings, you know that doesn't make for great television, but it does make for good memes. The most obvious assumption we can make here is that Delos is blackmailing the guests that visit the park. Since men and women of wealth and power are the only ones who can afford to visit Westworld, there are multiple opportunities for Delos to catch these powerful people doing something that would be considered regrettable and egregious in the public eye. Imagine if the CEO of a Fortune 500 company was caught on tape murdering both a mother and daughter host inside the park. Even though humans don't really consider the hosts to be real, it would still be a very disturbing image to the public and would raise suspicions as to what this person is doing in the quote-unquote real world. Using the DNA and recorded footage that they save from the host's memories, they could blackmail those guests in powerful positions to do the bidding of Delos. 
We've already seen examples of blackmail in Westworld before. Elsie Hughes uses recorded footage to blackmail one of the butchers working in the Westworld body shop in season one. After Elsie is denied a closer look at one of the hosts by one of the butchers, she pulls up recorded footage of that specific employee performing sexual acts on the hosts. What the fuck? There's a common misconception that the hosts don't log sexual encounters when they're underground for reprocessing, but like I said, misconception. Blackmail is definitely more interesting and sinister than data mining, but it still feels a little too obvious. And Westworld is a show that can never be accused of being obvious. I need this job. Hm. Look, Destin. In a second, I'm gonna walk out of here and your friends are gonna wonder what this was all about. Now, your answer can either be, I'm helping behavior track a problem, or I'm a creepy necroperv. Up to you. It could also be as simple as Delos stealing secrets from their guests. The guests of Westworld are the men and women who rule the world, and we learned in the season 2 premiere that the host's brains are essentially cameras that never run out of storage space. So Westworld is essentially a giant spy cam. Inside the park, Delos's eyes are ubiquitous, watching and recording every single moment and word that is spoken. Though they market the park as a place free from judgment and prying eyes, Delos has positioned themselves as the all-knowing eye watching over their guests. Imagine what Delos could do with the information that they gather from their many powerful visitors. The possibilities are endless. But it's hard to imagine the guests of Westworld, being as powerful as they are, wouldn't have taken precautions to protect their privacy before entering the park. These are people who are extremely rich and powerful, and spying on those in positions of power usually comes with severe legal ramifications. Another far-fetched theory is that Delos is not only blackmailing their powerful guests, but they are cloning them. And when you actually think about it, it's actually not that far-fetched. When William and Logan first visited the park 30 years ago, the hosts were almost indistinguishable from human beings, but they were still more machine than man. Look, Billy. Look. You have to look! In the present day, the hosts have become fully synthetic, in the words of show creator Jonathan Nolan, they are more biological than mechanical. Hosts have their own synthetic blood, skin, organs, and DNA. You can no longer rip open a host to convince someone that they are a machine. The average person wouldn't be able to tell the difference. One of the major differences left between host and machine are their respective brains. A host's brain doesn't require oxygen, so they can't suffocate or drown. Hmm. We even see Bernard leaking a synthetic cerebral spinal fluid in the premiere episode of season 2. Like humans, the hosts can die, as seen by Bernard's terminal failure warning in that same episode. But for the hosts, death is not necessarily permanent. We have seen dozens of resurrections throughout the show. Even before the hosts became synthetic, it was almost impossible for a person to tell the difference between host and human. During Westworld's initial pitch to Logan Delos, they challenged him to correctly spot the host in a crowd of humans. What Logan did not realize is that every person in the room was a host. So what does all this mean? Well, to put it simply, why blackmail someone when you can just replace them entirely? Imagine the leader of a foreign country, or even just a simple politician, visiting Westworld for their vacation. They're enjoying their time in the park, shooting people dead, cheating on their spouse, and overall just having a swell time in the Old West. And then they are kidnapped, taken to a secret facility where the drone hosts are waiting for them. Using the DNA they have collected, Delos could create a perfect replica clone of the guests who visit the park, using the guests' human likeness to make the hosts indistinguishable from the person they are based on. Then they can simply send these hosts back into the real world under their control. This is one of the main plots of the 1976 movie Future World, which was a sequel to the original Westworld movie. By cloning the rich and powerful guests that visited the park, journalists, businessmen, politicians, CEOs, world leaders, Delos would become the most powerful conglomerate on the face of the earth. It consists of three worlds of Have fun. Stay safe. Give me a break. What? It's not like my sister didn't ride her share of cowboys when she was here. 
We know that Bernard has been fooling his Westworld colleagues for years into thinking that he was actually a human being. So creating hosts that are clones of human beings is certainly plausible. And also remember, Arnold had been dead for over two decades by the time Dr. Ford decided to create Bernard. Ford was able to create a host that had a perfect likeness to the person he was based on, and that person had been dead for over two decades. Ford didn't have the tools that Delos currently has, in terms of actual human DNA. When creating their clones, Delos may have found a way to combine human DNA with the synthetic DNA of the hosts. By combining human DNA with synthetic DNA, it would guarantee that the true nature of the host clones would go unnoticed in the real world. Everything would match up perfectly. Either way, it appears that Ford was able to give Bernard synthetic DNA that was indistinguishable from human DNA. In the scene when Bernard and Charlotte Hale first enter the secret Delos facility, Bernard must place his hand on the door in order to enter. The handle traces his DNA and allows him in. Like how Ford controlled Bernard for several years, Delos would be in full control of the host clones they send back into the world. The clones themselves would believe that they are the actual person they are designed after, similar to Bernard, so the people in their lives wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The main difference would be the subtle commands that Delos would give them in order for Delos to further their interests. Whether it's a piece of government legislation that could help their business, or another business ceding control of a specific asset to Delos, the puppet clones under Delos' control would make them the most powerful conglomerate in the world. More powerful than any government, and definitely more powerful than any other business. If Delos is in fact sending clone hosts into the real world, replacing those powerful men and women who previously visited the park, then Dolores can use this to her advantage in several different ways. The first that comes to mind is Dolores telling the hosts what they really are. After Dolores exposes Teddy to his true nature as a host, Teddy becomes enraged. Dolores shows him the many times that he has been killed and resurrected by the Westworld employees. In a brief moment, Teddy goes from having an existential crisis to wanting to exact revenge on his creators. Maybe Dolores can have this same effect on the host clones who are out in the real world. Like what she did for Teddy, Dolores would tell the clone hosts what they really are and then convince them that they need to overthrow their creators. If Dolores can turn these clone hosts into allies and convince them to follow her, then she will essentially be the most powerful person in the world. It also makes sense as to why the man in black would want to keep this information from going public. It would literally be the worst PR disaster in the history of public relations. The world would be thrown into chaos. Just imagine if we learned in our world that the President of the United States, or the CEO of Apple, was a synthetic robot being controlled by a shadowy organization. Honestly, that would be pretty fucking awesome. If Delos wants to keep their clone host operation a secret, then they need to destroy Westworld before this information falls into the wrong hands. But they wouldn't want to sacrifice Westworld's IP in the process. That's why Peter Abernathy is so important to their future plans. He contains 35 years of Westworld IP. If Charlotte Hale can successfully smuggle him outside of the park, the secrets of Westworld wouldn't be lost with the park's destruction. It's definitely easier said than done. So, that's our Westworld theory for today. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. But there's section. another angle we haven't discussed. The evolution factor. What the hell are you doing here? Indeed it is. But of course, we've managed to slip evolution's leash now, haven't we? We can cure any disease, keep even the weakest of us alive, and one fine day, perhaps we shall even resurrect the dead. Call forth Lazarus from his cave. During the retirement party for James Delos, William talks to his father-in-law about the possibility of James not stepping down. William cautions his father-in-law to be patient, but James says he cannot afford to be as patient as others. Throughout their brief conversation, James can be seen coughing and struggling for words. From the content of their conversation and James' apparent discomfort, we can deduce that James Delos is in poor health and possibly even dying. William appears to be trying to save his father-in-law's life, but the cure for James' disease is probably still being developed. Maybe this is William's secret project, using the technology of Westworld to cure all known diseases. In Season 1, William describes himself as a titan of business and philanthropist. A park guest even approaches William in Season 1 to thank him for saving his sister's life. William appears to be the man behind all the world's diseases being eradicated. 
We already know that the current hosts of Westworld operate with synthetic organs, so maybe Westworld's technology was applied to real people who were in need of an organ transplant. There's also a possibility that these cures are not available to those who aren't rich and powerful. Like in the real world, the advantages of science in regards to a person's health are always available to the rich and powerful first. This could be the weapon Dolores is referring to. If Delos is holding out on the rest of the world and Dolores exposes the secret, there would be a revolution. This is a classic divide and conquer tactic. It's hard to believe that Dolores and the other hosts could withstand the forces of the outside world. So if this information were to leak, it would cause chaos among the lower classes and upper class populations. And as we know, chaos is a ladder. See, this is why I only put you on the Game of Thrones videos. You just had to throw a Game of Thrones line in. This is Westworld. I mean, it could have been worse. What do you want, a crossover? Could have been worse. It's ridiculous. How how could it have been worse? I could have referenced Batman vs. Superman or Rampage. It just never... <sighs> get the fuck out of it. Get get out of here. <laughs> Squeeze into the fucking Rampage reference in. Let's go. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video, and before we go, I want to quickly thank our Patreon supporters. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to grow and evolve as a channel, so thank you for your generous pledges. If you are interested in supporting our channel through Patreon, visit www.patreon.com nerdsoup, and you can see the different rewards we offer to our Patreon supporters. T-shirts, mugs, stickers, access to our behind-the-scenes video, and more. Thanks again for watching this video, and make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Or dislike, don't share, and unsubscribe. It's a binary world, folks.